Of all the Guinness World Records out there just waiting to be beaten, one of the loudest and most exhausting has to be the world drumming record. The official number to beat, 120 consecutive hours. We've all tried it, haven't we? And last year, one brave Canadian gave it a go. But as Connex Jim Lagajanis found out at the time, it wasn't just getting his name in the record books that motivated him. Uh, my name is Steve Gaunt, I'm 39 years old, I'm a cancer survivor, and I'm beating cancer with my sticks. After having survived testicular cancer when he was 22, Steve Gall made the attempt to raise money for cancer research after his sister was diagnosed with the disease. In the end, he came up short. Steve dropped out after 73 consecutive hours or three solid days behind the drum kit. Valiant effort. And even though he didn't beat the record last year, Steve did raise $27,000. And tomorrow, He's going to try again. Jim Lagajanis recently reconnected with Steve to talk about what's motivating him this time. Everything hurts. Everything, everything is, every, every muscles are hurting, your brain's hurting, your eyes are trying to close, you're fighting to keep them awake. I was definitely disappointed. I didn't raise much money as I wanted, but you know, it's my first time doing anything like this. I've never run a charitable event. I've never run anything. Oh, 17 years clean and free now. Clean, clean and free now. I went through some pretty dark moments and pretty dark places. And I, I realized then, I think what came to mind was all the things that people did to give me a second chance of life. You know, I, um, you know, I, I often say sometimes right down to the person that hands out water at a Terry Fox run. You know, that person there helped make a difference and give me a chance to live. Because everybody that does anything for any fundraising event to raise money to fight cancer had a part in me having a second chance at living. Because if they didn't, I wouldn't be here. I, I'm honored. I thought he was crazy. I still think he's a little loopy. When my sister was diagnosed with paranasal cancer, I, uh, in a little bit of time, realized that I needed to, uh, I, I couldn't accept what was happening. I had a hard time sitting on the other side of the bed. So I um, decided I was gonna run across Canada. And that was going to be me fighting for her, make a difference. I figure it worked for Terry Fox. I mean, not many other people have done it at this point. It seems like a good idea. And then about five months before we left, I was on a 40K training run out some trails. And I went down, I tore my meniscus, and haven't been able to run the same since. A lot of core work and I think some shoulder. My case has been kind of specifically designed, for me anyways. two months at a knee surgery when we did last year's event. And, uh, you know, didn't have a lot of training, didn't have a lot of knowledge, we threw it together. We did good. I mean, 73 hours, it's fifth, fifth in the world. Um, $27,000 we raised. You know, that's pretty cool for a first time out. We have such a bond now that we've both been through cancer at such a young age. And we look out for each other. It was harder for me watching him too. It certainly was. The day after the event, um, my brother-in-law, I called him for whatever reason, we working, picking up some equipment and stuff like that, packing down. And I asked him how Tony was, and he said, man, I have never seen her so happy in, like, years. He said, after your event ended last night, yesterday, he said, we had a whole bunch of us came over to the house, had a big pool party, and she smiled and laughed the whole day. And he said, I can't remember the last time she did that. She passed away on December 12th. But the uh, phone rang at 3 in the morning. So there's a lot of people who have had phone calls like that that you don't want to get. You don't have to answer the phone, you know what it is. But you have to answer it. I was pretty depressed. And I was like, well, uh, you know, I don't know what happened to me, why bother? You know, last year I did it for her to inspire her to fight. And part of me says, well, gee, good job. You know, and now I failed. Her battle is over. Um, as cliche as it is, the war is not. You know, it's, it's not beach to beat cancer and this, what I'm doing is not a, 
just about her and I. You know, it's much bigger than that. So I can't be so small-minded to think it's just about us. I have to realize there are other people out there and the war is still going. There are many people still battling cancer that need our help. If, if me suffering and going through what I'm doing to show people that, yeah, you can do things that are really seem impossible, and maybe they'll can fight a little bit harder and then they can do things that are impossible. Hi, uh, you still happy? You still smiling? You're good? Well, her name is Remy T. Gall. I called her T because my sister's nickname was T. I all called her T, so it is just T. Remy T. Remy T. People talk about when one when the whole uh, thing of the circle of life, I guess is the word I'm looking for. You know, losing a, a, my sister, gaining a daughter. I'm tough sometimes when I look at her. See some kind of wonderful. So it's Grand Funk, some kind of wonderful. This morning in Burlington, Ontario, hundreds of people turned up bright and early to cheer him on as he approached 120 hours. Look at the support, isn't this amazing? Then at eight. <laughs> broke the record with the clashes, should I stay or should I go? He, of course, decided to stay and continue drumming for one more hour. I said before, you know, I'm doing this, it's about beating cancer. The record was just, that oh, was pretty cool. <laughs> As you've all noticed, one person can make a difference. I'm gonna look at this room. Let's, let's get him out of here. He may be weak and exhausted after 121 hours of drumming, but after he wakes up, he'll go in the record books and more than $35,000 will go to cancer research.